So let's finish the last part, which is actually your glycogen storage diseases. So let's start off with the first, which is known as your Von Jerks disease. Now, Von, Von Jerks is also known as type 1 glycogen storage disease, and it arises from a deficiency of glucose 6-phosphate. So what you see here in this picture is the classical face of a child with Von Jerks. So I want you to pay attention to the chubby cheeks. Okay, has a unique facies, which we call the cherub-like facies. So Von Jerk's disease is type 1, glycogen storage disease. The deficiency is glucose 6-phosphate. So classic manifestations and clinical correlates. So someone with glucose 6-phosphatase deficiency presents with severe hypoglycemia, lactic acidosis, hepatomegaly, hyperlipidemia, hyperuricemia, and they have a short stature. On physical exam, the patient can present with lipid deposits on the skin, so they have the skin xanthomas, and because of the hyperlipidemia, they also develop a fatty liver. So take a few minutes to go over the slide. Glucose 6-phosphatase deficiency. So don't forget von Jerks, the cherub-like facies. Next is your Pompe or your POMPS disease. This is glycogen storage disease type 2. So the enzymes involved is either acid maltase deficiency or alpha glucosidase deficiency. So type 2, acid maltase or alpha glucosidase deficiency. I'm showing you a picture of a heart because this is the glycogen storage disease which predominantly affects the heart, leading to heart failure. So next is your Cori's disease. So what you see here is a picture of a child with hepatosplenomegaly. So glycogen storage disease type three, this is known as Cori's disease. So please take note of this. So the enzyme deficient is your debranching enzyme. So please take note of that, okay? Your debranching enzyme. Now, the debranching enzyme, or your liver and muscle debranching enzyme leads to glycogen storage disease type three, okay? And this is what we mentioned earlier, Cordy's disease. I just want to dig deeper since this is mentioned in your Harper's, they mention a deficiency okay, of your debranching enzyme, which is your type 3A, which is also known as Cori's or Forbes disease or limit dextrinosis. So a patient with Cori's or Forbes disease usually presents with fasting hypoglycemia, hepatomegaly, and an accumulation of a characteristic branch polysaccharide, which is known as limit dextrin. Now, since this involves muscle glycogen, your patient also presents with muscle weakness. So type 3B, which is known as limit dextrinosis, okay, the same as type 3A, but the difference here is there's no muscle weakness, okay? So take note, the pearl, type 3B has no muscle weakness. Then we go to the branching enzyme, which is glycogen storage disease, type 4. And this is known as Anderson's disease. So take note. Anderson's disease is type 4, and this is your visual mnemonics. So let's go back to basics. The alphabet, A, B, C, and D. So your Anderson's disease, this is the branching enzyme which is deficient. Then it's Cori's disease. What is deficient is the debranching enzyme. 
So A, B, C, D. Anderson's is branching. Corey's is debranching. Now, winding down, I'm going to mention muscle phosphorylase or myophosphorylase deficiency, which leads to the famous McArdle's disease, which is classified as glycogen storage disease type 5. So again, McArdle's disease or glycogen storage disease type 5 is a deficiency in your muscle phosphorylase, which is also known as myophosphorylase. So manifestations, they present with poor exercise tolerance. They also present with an abnormally high muscle glycogen level and very low blood lactate levels after exercise. Now normally after exercise, what happens is aerobic glycolysis shifts to anaerobic glycolysis and the end product of anaerobic glycolysis would be lactate. So classically after prolonged exercise, what would happen is your blood lactate level would increase. But in patients with McArdles, the blood lactate level after exercise is very low. Now winding down, glycogen storage disease type 6. This is your hepatic glycogen phosphorylase deficiency. So the enzyme deficient is hepatic glycogen phosphorylase. And this is what we call HERS disease. So your simple mnemonics from Doc Toom. What's the enzyme? Hepatic glycogen phosphorylase. What's the first letters? H-E-P. So that's HEP. HEP, HEP. Hooray. Okay. So hepatic glycogen is hooray or hers disease. Hep, hep, hooray. Lastly, we have phosphofructokinase deficiency, which is glycogen storage disease type 7. This is known as Tarui's disease. So phosphofructokinase deficiency, glycogen storage disease type 7. This is Tarui's disease. So here's a misplaced slide. This is actually adding more to Anderson's disease earlier, which is type 4. They also present with hepatospinomegaly. They usually die before the age of 5, either from heart or liver failure. So there's actually two glycogen storage diseases that can present with heart failure. We have Corey's disease. Then we have Anderson's disease. Okay. So this is your clinical correlate. This is mentioned in your Harper's. The accumulation of amylopectin. Okay. Particularly in the liver and the heart, hence the liver failure and the heart failure. So this is amylopectin. And we mentioned this earlier, the last glycogen storage disease we're taking up for this module, your Tarui's disease, phosphofructokinase deficiency. Okay. So this is the last slide. Tarui's disease or phosphofructokinase deficiency also presents with poor exercise tolerance. So just like McArdle's, the blood lactate is also very low and the muscle glycogen is abnormally high. So what differentiates this from the other glycogen storage diseases is the presence of hemolytic anemia. So please take note of that. So during the full course module for biochemistry, I will summarize all of the major chapters from Harper's. That's for the first passing. And when we go to the coaching, final coaching, we'll take it a second time around. Okay? So with this, I hope you learned something from module four, which is clinical biochemistry. Prepare for your exam. Take your time. And make use of the time period given for each module. You are allowed to view the video as many times as you want. Make sure you don't print. Print grab, grab screen, screenshot, or attempt to download, or automatically your user account becomes blocked. And if you're enrolled in the full course, automatically your full course slot will be forfeited. So with this, I'd like to say thank you. This is Doc Toom. God bless and have a good day.